I'm quite passionate about this, um, so I'll take you through it. Okay, there's a lot of literature written about mini AVR. Very little of it is prospective, most of it's historic, most of it uses uh, controls from the same era. And this is sort of what the results come out as. That is, cross clamp time is shorter, bypass time is shorter if you're having a standard AVR. If you're having a mini AVR, then ITU stay, extubation, leaving hospital is that bit shorter. And what almost all the papers show is that blood loss is less with a mini AVR. And we all know that blood transfusion puts you into a bad survival bracket, whatever sort of surgery you're having. And this is the biggest meta-analysis uh, that there is. It goes back to uh, 2009. What it also shows is there's very little difference in terms of uh, morbidity, such as stroke, atrial fibrillation, uh, etc. I have to say, I've been doing it 15 years. I've never had a deep-seated wound infection yet. So overall, there's a sort of apologetic uh, com confirmation at the end that says, it's okay. It doesn't say it's great, but it says it's safe. Let's go into it a bit deeper. This is a typical sort of paper that you'll see. So this is from 2014. So we first of all start with 55% having a conventional AVR, 44% having a mini AVR. You then propensity match them to end up with a small number in each group. And what you find is that the mini AVRs have got a lower Euro score than the conventional AVRs. So if you're risky, let's do a proper operation. This doesn't really compare mini AVR. This is cosmetic, but this is how so many of the papers are written. Mini AVR only goes with low risk groups, and I want to challenge that. So what you do now is you dumb it down. You get a Euro score for the whole group of uh, six. You've got very low morbidity mortality with this operation. You've got 400 in each group. Do you think you'll be able to be powered to show anything? Well, I don't. So it's not surprising that they come out the same. But hang on a minute. With TAVI, the same is called non-inferior. And what partner says is, if it's non-inferior, you should be doing this. Why bother opening the chest? And I think that's how we should start to look at it. If it's just as good, why are you making a big hole? And they actually say that because of the low Euroscore and the low numbers, confidence intervals are actually quite wide. Now here's another paper. I'm sure our guest in the front row will, uh, will recognize it because his, uh, his name's on it. So it comes from Leipzig. This is a large experience of patients. A quarter of them are having mini AVR. Three quarters are having conventional. When we look at the group, we find that the mini AVRs are younger. They've got a lower logistic Euroscore. They've got better NYHA class. They've got lower comorbidities better ejection fractions. So again, this isn't looking in a high-risk setting or a setting where you would expect to find something. This is saying that we only do mini AVRs when it's safe. What they found were some uh, interesting differences. There were trends uh, rather than uh, significant differences. But what came out here was that if you had a mini AVR, your chance of living uh, five and eight years was far better. And so it's just as good in the short term, but in the longer term, you get an advantage. Now, this is all the reasons you can do it. What I want to do is to concentrate on reducing morbidity, mortality, and look at sternal wound problems. So let's look at this in a high-risk setting. Now, it doesn't get much higher risk than this. This is redo AVR over the age of 80. And this is coming from uh, Larry Cohn, in, uh, in Boston, and they have a huge experience of, uh, of mini AVRs. So they've got 105 patients, and they're looking at mortality, at complications, and at survival. Both groups have got the same uh, characteristics, but they haven't actually been randomized. It's just some surgeons at Boston do mini AVR, and others don't. What we actually see is that when you have a huge experience in mini-AVR, it doesn't actually take any longer. 
A lot of the studies are because people dabble, if you like, in mini AVRs, but when your practice is dominated by it, the speed issues don't really count. In terms of outcome, 9.3 versus 3.9% uh, mortalities. Now, the, the cohort's only 50-odd in each. It's too small to show, but really quite dramatic. But in everything else, uh, mini-AVR was just as good, even in a redo setting. And here we come back to survival. Survival differences are really quite dramatic. So at five years, if you had a full stenotomy, less than 40% were alive versus nearly uh, versus 65%. The median survival was far better in the mini stenotomy group. After we started TAVI, I looked at the first 60 patients that I did as a mini AVR. So this is going back to 2009, 10, 11. I can't do it now because they all get it, so the, the Euro score is down. But this was targeting TAVI turndowns. So they've got a high incidence of COPD, a high incidence of peripheral vascular disease, higher Euro score all round, and yet morbidity and mortality and things like chest infection was far lower. I think we've been fishing in the wrong pond when we're looking at mini-AVR. We ought to be looking at it in a higher risk setting where comorbidities, etc., will show a much better advantage. So there are the two major reasons. What's the difference? The difference is the skin incision. That's all. Because underneath that skin incision, everyone's got a hemistenotomy. And everyone gets hung up on the size of the skin incision. And I say, make the skin incision as big as you like. Make it as long as the full stenotomy. Just only cut the sternum in half. And I've used it for roots. I've used it for uh, some ascending aneurysms. And this lady's uh, 46 with a bicuspid valve. And her redo will be much simpler for having had a mini AVR. And I've used it in the obese. And it works really well in the obese. So let's stick with the obese. So here we have 160 consecutive obese patients uh, being compared with full stenotomy patients. Now we, can't, we have to take into account that only half of the patients had an aortic valve replacement and some of them are, are mitrals. Even so, the, um, the minimally invasive group tended to be higher risk. But in terms of outcome, mortality, 0 versus 8.3%. Morbidity. Less than half, be it composite, be it renal failure, be it respiratory, blood products, less than half in the mini group. When you start to look in higher risk settings, mini AVR really starts to pay off. So a lot of surgeons feel that they're operating with one hand tied behind their back. And then along comes sutureless technology. And I would put it to you that sutureless technology is not about shortening the cross clamp time, but what it does is it allows you to do a mini AVR in more complex and challenging anatomical settings. This is just to prove what it does with, uh, with um, cross clamp time. So cadence MIS randomized two groups. If you had a mini stenotomy, you got a sutureless valve. If you had a full stenotomy, you got a sutured valve. Only small numbers in each group. But what they were able to show was, if you did a mini stenotomy with a sutureless valve, you actually had a significant 24% reduction in cross clamp time than if you'd done a full open stenotomy standard operation. So all the worries people have about increased time, etc., is negated by using new technology. And I think as it develops and worries about paravalvular leak disappear, that this will become the way of the future. So here are some final thoughts. I say to another surgeon, you should do full uh, mini, mini stenotomy. He says, but it's no better. And the literature shows that it is just as good. But I think that we should stop apologizing and we should start saying it's non-inferior. And if you can do the same operation through a smaller hole, why the hell are you making such a, such a big stenotomy? If you look in the higher risk settings, I think mini AVR is uh, dramatically advantageous. Now let's turn it around and look at a patient. The patient goes in and says, I want a mini AVR. And the sur same surgeon says, but it's no better. So what that patient would turn around and say, so why do you want to make a big hole in my chest? Why do you want to give me more blood? Why do you want to give me more pain? Why do you want to slow my recovery? I think the case is quite clear, and I think we should be aiming it for the higher risk groups and forgetting the cosmetics. Thank you very much.
Jonathan? Jonathan, you are.